Welcome to CC Live. Finally, I'm back. I've been really busy with work lately, uh, but I would like to start to upload more of my videos and then share my experience here in Japan with you guys. And if you have any questions or any comments that you have in those videos that I've been uploading, uploading I recommend you leave a comment down below. And of course, I'm inviting you to subscribe to my channel. So, what I want to talk about today is the lesson that I learned living in Japan. I, there's there's many things that I want to share with you guys, but the last time that I did my the video regarding 30 things about Japan it was so long. So today I would like to divide it in five things. So let's start it. Okay, so the first thing they want you to accommodate it to them rules. So I don't I don't mean that they want you to be a Japanese or they want you to, to be like 100% Japanese but I mean they want you to accommodate it in what is the real the, the life that they have it right now so I see a lot of people that are trying to combine themselves like if they are from other countries that they have to follow the way that they are and maybe sometimes it's a culture shock that they have here in Japan and I mean when you are at home, that's fine, but when you are out of the home, especially if you're working, uh, three things is the basic thing is greeting, uh, be gratitude, have a gratitude, and also cooperate with them. The thing is, it's it was really difficult for me, even for me, like living for almost 20 years, but I've been keeping learning every day, every, every year, even with my friends. So, uh, greeting for sure, I think this is not only in Japan, like when you go to somewhere, somewhere and then you've, you've um, met him with someone, of course you're gonna say like, nice to meet you or something like that, but it's more like the greeting, it's really important in the workplace. So, they just want you to learn the culture and trying to accommodate it in the rules that they have. So, I'm not saying that you have to be like 100% Japanese, but just those small things that you see the difference with your culture trying to complement in your daily life yeah okay so the other thing is uniqueness uniqueness is your charming point this is the other lesson that i take so much to learn by, for myself and i think everybody's have is a charm point especially if you are if especially if you're a foreigner and then you come from a different type of culture in my case uh, I'm really toxic with the persons. I sometimes kind of shy, but I'm not saying like I'm gonna be quiet in some place. But those kind of difference, uh, those kind of the way that you are, you need to feel like it's a turn point, especially if you want to be um, living for a long term. Find something that you're doing really good or even myself like when I see someone like doing something like it's impressive or something like it's good and I feel like I can incorporate it in the way that I am I'm trying to follow find someone like it's a role model for you try to implement to yourself but I'm not saying to copy and become a different person I mean like that uniqueness that you have the way that you are the way that you're talking the way that you that you acting is the unique way and then it's I'm I'm gonna talk about the love as attraction maybe but it's the way that you should love yourself so showing that uniqueness you need to I will recommend you to feel like it's a turn point for yourself. So the other thing that the next lesson that I learned it's about the Japanese. Uh, I don't know if you guys hear about the Keigo. It's the term of respect is like honorific but I see a lot of persons who are trying to learn Japanese, like trying to, to learn all the 3000 kanjis or then trying to learn all the way to say in the daily life. Of course, daily, daily life conversation is important, but also if you're trying to live in here and then if you're trying to get a job here, I recommend you first master that just having a good a good way to talk with a person with that respect that thing is gonna change on the first impression that you do to that Japanese person so I focus more 
I I know myself that I don't speak like I don't speak like 100% like Japanese, but at least like I have a Keiko Masters. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I took it better than the Japanese person in you know work something like that. But Keiko, the same. So then uh, time about time. I feel time is so precious, and this is why I've been learned living here for a long term. Uh, the thing is like when you start when I, even when I was in a university I was working five days a, a day five days a week and then I, I have my university for two days a week so pretty much like my whole week was working or study and then when you start to work it's you're gonna start what uh, nine in the morning eight in the morning finish sometimes maybe to the last train and if you have a time even that that busy schedule if you have some time to spend with your friends or your family i recommend you just go for it because oh, our life is so short i'm missing so much events and i'm regretting that that things but the thing is like it's what i learned here in japan is like the time is so precious if you have um possibility that you can request it for a vacation or maybe like a day off um, just try to get it and then spend a the time with your family, spend a time with your friends, spend a time the thing that you really like to do because that time will not back anymore. The thing is like always is not only about work, always it's not only about study. That you have to have a time to relax, a time to 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 reset that button and then going back to work and back to study again. So this is the other lesson that I learned. The last thing is always you're gonna find there is a plan B. I'm a person who's trying to make everything perfect and every time to like just the way that I like. If I focus, okay, I want these things, it needs to be that way. But I've been learning that not always it's gonna be the way that you are thinking. Always it's gonna be a plan B to follow. And that is the lesson that I learned from my dad. Actually, when I was, after I finished my university and I was working in, actually I worked for a cell phone company, but that time I was working from the second year in my university, I was working for that cell phone company, I decided to get there. But since I was a kid, I really wanted to work for the airline. And then I was talking with my dad, he said, just always you're gonna find a plan B so just focus in get like maybe not the, the, the job title that you really wanted to but at least like getting a way to get into that company and then after that I think that was the best thing that he could tell me I get my months later I got my dream job I work at the airline right now and yeah so Little by little, one step by one step, you're gonna find a way to get it to your final goal. But always remember this: never be afraid to have a mistake. Like we are persons, we are not robots. So never be afraid to have any mistake, or never be afraid to just have something that it's not going well. It's going wrong. Well, the thing is like there you you always gonna find the way that it's going better for yourself so well it's only five things that i'm sharing this time but i hope you guys like this video and of course if you like your video give me a thumbs up and if you want something to share with me or anything that you want me to clarify or well, anything that you want me to to share with you guys just leave a comment down below and Thank you very much for watching this video. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.